In this video I want to show you how we can compare one value as a percentage of another. I'm going to be using an approach that makes a lot of use of simplifying fractions so if you feel you're a little rusty on that I would suggest you review those two videos first and then come back to this one. These are based on the kind of questions we will get in the first year nursing and midwifery exams. So let's take the first example where we are asked to compare the number 80 and the number 320 using percent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you to the idea of a formula. I'm going to start by comparing the two numbers by way of a fraction and then I'm going to convert that fraction to a percent by times and by 100. In other words, I'm going to be doing taking the first number, putting up the second number and multiplying it by 100. Let's see how that works here. So here we have, let's just make ourselves a little space, 80 over 320 and then times 100. Now as I'm not allowed to use a calculator, I am going to be working primarily on that fraction. So the first thing I can see to simplify is to cancel the zeros, otherwise known as divide by 10. I'm left with 8 over 32, which I recognise as both numerator and denominator being even numbers, so I can halve it, so it becomes 4 over 16. I'm going to ignore the times 100 for a second and just keep working on this fraction. Well, 4 over 16 also halves to 2 over 8 and halves one more time to 1 over 4. Now you might actually recognise what this percentage is, one over four or a quarter, but many occasions we won't know, we won't recognise it, so let's complete it by putting back in the times 100, and here we have to work out one over four times 100. Now let me just remind you of the method of multiplying a fraction by a number. If I've got a fraction, in this case 1 over 4, and I'm multiplying it by 100, what I like to do visually, to make sure I don't go wrong, is just to extend that line. That reminds me that I'm only multiplying the top value by the 100, and not both top and bottom. Well, 1 times 100 is just 100, and the bottom value stays the same. Now what I'll do here is I'll remind you also of how to turn any fraction into final answer it is if I knock that fraction over in other words I've got to work out 4 into 100 well 4 into 1 doesn't go so 4 into 10 goes twice remainder 2 I notice about the 2 above where the 10 ends and then I say 4 into 20 is 5 in other words comparing 80 and 320 using percent the answer is 25%. So we've taken the first number and we've compared it using fractions by putting it over the second number and then multiply it by 100. And the primary skill we've had to use there is simplifying fractions. Let's do another one. Just get rid of that for a second. Now we have to express 54 as a percentage of 120. So again I'm going to use that idea of the first number of the second number times 100. So let's do that then. So the first number is 54, the second number is 120, and then I will eventually, once I've simplified it down, multiply it by 100. Now 54 and 120, I can't knock off the zero because the golden rule, remember, for simplifying is the top number and the bottom number must have the same thing done to it but they are both even, I can halve them. Now half of 54 is 27, and the half of 120 is just 60. And whilst I continue simplifying, I'm just gonna ignore for now the times 100. Well, what goes into 27 and 60? Well, my favorites of divide by 10, divide by two, and divide by five are out. But there is that final trick, which is where if we can spot three goes in, it does in this case in both the top and bottom. Remember how we add the digits and 2 and 7 gives 9, which is in the 3 times table, and 6 and 0 
is 6, which is also in the 3 times table. So I know 3 goes into both. Now 3 into 27 is 9. And 3 into 60, doesn't matter if I can't recall it, I can always work it out on the side. Well, 3 into 60, I can now see it's just 20. So 27 over 60 becomes 9 over 20. So our original 54 over 120 has simplified right down to 9 over 20. So finally we bring in that times 100. So we're now, we've simply simplified the question. Then we make that line long. And 9 times 100 is 900. And the bottom one stays the same. I could just tip it over and do the division. But here I can actually recognise to simplify this a little bit. It becomes 90 over 2. In other words, how many 2's go into 90? Well, 2 into 9 goes 4 remainder 1, and 2 into 10 goes 5. So our answer expressed 54 as a percentage of 120. The answer is 45%. Let's do one more. We'll have to find what is 192 as a percentage of 240. So again, recall my preferred method, first number over second number times 100. So our first number is 192. Our second number is 240. And once we've simplified that down, we'll times by 100. Well, 192 and 240 I'm pretty sure the only thing that is obvious to me is halving. The top one's quite tricky to halve, so I better do some work on that. What is 2 into 192? Remember, halving a number is the same as divide by 2. Well, 2 into 1 doesn't go, but 2 into 19 goes 9, which takes me to 18, with 1 left over. And then 2 into 12 is 6. So that becomes 96 over. I can do 240 in my head, half of 240. 120. As luck would have it, they're still both even numbers. Half of 96, if I can't do it in my head, I just do it as a division, but I can spot it is 48, and a half of 120 is 60. As luck would have it, I can halve again, 24 over 30, and I can keep going to 12 over 15. I can't halve anymore, but can you see what number does go into both top and bottom? Well, it's 3, isn't it? Now, how many 3's in 12? There are 4. And how many 3's in 15? There's 5. So, bringing in the idea of not forgetting the times 100, we have 4 over 5 times 100. Visually, what helps me is just to make that line long. So, well, 4 times 100 is 400. And 5 remains unchanged. I now tip that over, so it becomes 5 into 400 well 5 into 4 doesn't go so 5 into 40 is 8 times look where the 8 goes over the end of the 40 and then 5 into 0 is 0 so the answer for what is 192 as a percentage of 20, 240 the answer is 80 percent okay so three questions there the main skill, as I said already, is simplifying. So that is your main skill. But you're not just simplifying fractions. You're having to multiply a fraction by value. And that value is always the number 100. So as a final exercise, I want you to have a look at these three questions. I'm going to pause the video in a moment, give you a chance to do it. What I'm also doing in these three questions is showing you how it is often expressed in different ways, but all three of these examples, these questions, are essentially asking the same thing. Take the first number and compare it as a percentage of the second number. Okay, so press pause. Okay, and here are your answers that you can now check. If you want further exercises, further examples, there is a whole exercise with, I think, 10 questions on the Moodle space. So thanks for watching and good luck with your practice. I know the students find this particular question on the paper, the final question, quite a tough one. Um, but through practice, you will become familiar and I promise you, you will become confident. Thank you very much for watching.